Praise the Lord, everyone. Good evening, family. How y'all doing this evening? Welcome to Inspired Life Ministries. And we are so glad that you joined us for Bible study. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is Hallelujah. the highest praise that we can give God. Amen. The website address is www.ilm247.org. O-R-G. Amen. Amen. Hope Welcome. you got your Bibles, yes. your ink pens, your journal, pencils, your notepad, whatever it is that you use so you can take notes, open up your hearts, your mind, so that the Holy Spirit can minister to you. Amen. Amen. As he allows us to serve in this capacity on this evening. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, what's happening, Miss... <laughs> Miss Pasta Shelly. <laughs> hey, Pasta. Hey, nothing much, baby. How are you? I'm great. How are you? You look great. Thank you. Yes, you do. Hey, I'm great too, baby. Hey, and I hope you guys are great too. Absolutely. We're just excited to have you on with us here at Inspire Life Ministries. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, let us enjoy together our Bible study. Now, remember, Bible study, at our Bible study, we do what? Study the Bible. Amen. Amen. So I just want to point that out. Sometimes we might be scripture driven and scripture referenced and in the scriptures while doing Bible study, but it's simply because we are doing Bible study. Amen. 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 If you agree, type amen. 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 Or as they say, amen. 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 So, uh, coming in agreement with our earlier prayer amen. that we had in our devotional times, I would like for us to continue. In the preparation for your season. Amen. Last, last week when we dealt with preparation for our season, Pastor Shelley invited us to understand preparation was the key. Amen. Amen. Preparation, preparation was the key. She gave the key. several uh, background scriptural references for that. And I invite you to go back online and revisit last week. Message. What was the name of last week's message, Pastor Shelley? Preparing for your season. Preparing for your season. Amen. 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 You can go to the website um, and do the replay, or you can go directly to Inspire Life Ministries YouTube channel. Absolutely, and you can find the replays there. Please, by all means, actually go back and see some of the stuff that we've gone over before so that you can be in tune with and have continuity of thought with where we're going. Amen. 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 And then last week, she challenged us to trust the process. Now that one was a big deal because often God is doing things through us and to us and we're not trusting much of the process. That's true. You know, we I don't agree. understand that there is a, ooh, excuse me. I'm acting like, okay, I ain't going to say the word millennial or nothing like that, but the process is not trusted because there's not a knowledge that there is a process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think we go from here to there, mm -hmm. to from the beginning of the, of a work to the end or middle of the work, but we don't realize that there's a something in between. Yeah, excuse me, that causes us to grow, and that's called process. process. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so some 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 age groups um, don't choose to believe in process, but trust me. Process is key. You must go through the process. Amen. And then she spoke on this one. Allowing yourself to get better <laughs> and not bitter. My, my, my. That was powerful. Because in our growing and in our development, there are challenges. Yeah. And those challenges cause us to be angry mm -hmm. at times. And that anger can turn to Bitterness. Yes. Amen. 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 And so we are not going to let any of that happen. Amen. Okay. And so here we are with part two. And I'm going to cover uh, for us because remember, we're preparing for our season. Amen. 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 Now, what I notice, Pastor, is that usually when we hear messages about season, it's usually about a great time. You follow me about a good time. Your season is coming. Yeah. You know, you're going to have a season. And, you know, uh, every New Year's Eve service that I've ever been to, the preacher encourages the people to get ready for their season. Mm -hmm. Their new season is coming, you know, and usually it's held with positive energy. Amen. Yeah. But I'm reminded of our last past 
uh, New Year's celebration that we attended. We actually attended two. One was a celebration, uh, a New Year's Eve celebration, and one was days before the New Year hit. And it was just a prediction, right? And I remember the days before the New Year's hit, the prediction was solemn. Remember that? I don't know if you remember that. I do, location. I do. I do. Yeah, we were at a location just visiting and prepared preparation for what we're doing here. And the, the, the minister of God at that time was expressing to the people of God at that time that it's going to be a pretty rough year. Yeah. I remember looking at Pastor and saying, Wow, this show is negative sound, you know, <laughs> and and but as he was saying that something was registering in my spirit and in hers that even though the somber tone that was being delivered, mm -hmm. it was something coming. Yeah. And even in our forming our ministry, the way God told us to do it, he told us to do it with something coming in mind. Yeah. And that we would have to go online and do ministry with you as we are doing right now. But this was pre-pandemic. And then it came to December 31st. And we got to that church and we had a celebration. We, we had did. a great we time, did. right? A wonderful, time. wonderful artists and all that kind of stuff. And then it came down to the time where the preacher said, starts declaring the word of God over people. And he starts saying, "Woo, this is going to be your year. This is going to be your season. And you know how everybody has a slogan. It's going to be yours in 2020 and all that kind of stuff. And so the preacher was doing that. And then they got to saying, it's going to be the year, people of God. Da, da, da. And he was going forth. And while he was still in the motion saying it, <laughs> pastor looked at me and she said, she's kind of blunt, y'all. She said, why is he lying? I said, baby, he's not lying. He's just, he said, but that's not true. What he's saying is not true. By the spirit, she knew this. You follow me? By the spirit, she knew it. Because prophetic oil doesn't always have the greatest of news. You follow me? That's what we've grown up to think in the word and in the church, is that it's always a bunch of good news. You're going to get another house. You're going to get another car. You're going to get a promotion on your job, you know, that kind of thing. And those things are true. Don't get me wrong, because promotion does what? Come from the Lord. Yeah. yeah. But it's not always like, like that. Sometimes prophecy has correction yeah, amen. in it. You follow me? Some, it has a critique to it. It has correction. It has a, a standard attached yeah. to it. Amen? Yeah, but I, and I want to say this, um, if I can, Absolutely. that um, one of the things that when, when we experience that, I'm grateful to God that you said, well, no. Um, this I forgot the way you well, said, the way it, I said it. Real quick, I said it. I said, I said, baby. Um, he, she said that's not true. I said, yeah, but baby, you know what? To be honest with you, for some of the people right. in here, that is true. It's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a good year, year even Amen. though it's gonna be a challenging year. Amen. And so um, I'm grateful. Um, how God uses all of us in a different way, but it's for His glory. Absolutely. I know y'all like wonder where y'all get to the. To word okay we are we are just a little fellowship right amen That's right. and so um i was grateful for that because i learned something absolutely in that and even on yesterday when we were riding coming in and i thought about wow like we've been eight months i think into this pandemic absolutely i think it really happened last year right in 2019 but then when all of the things went in place i think February by that time yeah that mm -hmm. when you think, count from February to October, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. math, come on, mathematicians, type in, tell me how many months that is. Right? Type in when it was, Eight man. months or something when like that. When did the pandemic hit? And, and when I thought about it, because I said it to you, I said, you know, I said, even though the social distancing, the wearing of the mask, and not really being able to see people in touch and hug like you really desire to, because I'm a hugger, so I like to take the grab and hug, squeeze tight. And so, <laughs> and so, um, one of the things that um, I had to stop right there in that moment while I was talking to Pastor Kofi, I had to. See, you remember what I said? Mm -hmm. I said, I said, I gotta give God a shout out. So anybody who know me personally, y'all know how I do. Right? She rolled down the I rolled window. Down the window. I did. She rolled down the window and stuck my head out, and, and I gave said, like a trumpet sound. So I was like. Hallelujah! But anyway, it's much louder than that. And so, Lord anyway, God, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, and all and that. And so, with mm -hmm. everything that we have been going through, the um, some people it's been depression, 
isolation for many people, not being able to celebrate birthdays the way they would normally celebrate. Yes. Um, but when we look at it overall, that even through all of this, God has not left us. Yes, surely not. And so God does prepare us for whatever season that we're going to enter into, but we have to ask God for his wisdom to be able to know how to effectively, properly handle the season that we're going Hallelujah. through and to stay in the weight knowing that God has not left us, he's yes. not forsaken us, Absolutely. and that he's with us. And so Absolutely. no further ado, I want to take up um, Absolutely. the time no, I appreciate that dialogue, forward. I really do. And thank you again for dialoguing with us. Amen? Amen. Well, again, the reason why I pointed that out as it relates to seasons is because I wanted to capitalize off of this thought pattern, that a season is it's a it's it's not just filled with great things coming your way and it's not just filled with bad right i want to define season in the context in which i'm using it in this particular mm -hmm. engagement with you all a season is a place or position that lasts a while right amen it's a season or pl I mean, i'm sorry a season is a place right or a position that lasts a while. Mm -hmm. It's not, and, and that position can be negative or that position can be positive. But it's a time in your life where you're in a place or in a position, mm -hmm. and that position or place it, it, is here for a minute. Right. You know, sometimes it's, it, sometimes things don't, just don't come in and out real quick. Right. Some things come in, some things go out real quick. And some things come in and it feel like you ain't going to never get past it. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And some good things happen and you feel like they ain't going to never end. And then right. the road goes from underneath of you and you fall on your bottom and you go, what happened? Yeah. We're here to prevent all that from happening. Amen? Amen. And so in order to do that, I want us to prepare for our seasons. Amen? Prepare for your season. In that scenario, Pastor, when we were talking earlier about... December 31st prediction for 220, right? Mm -hmm. This is what we should have been preparing for, but we didn't know. We should have been preparing with our masks, and we should have been preparing with some disinfectant, correct? But you didn't know it was coming, did you? Right. We didn't know it was coming. But not, what, that, like, not like in this way that it's coming. Yeah, we knew you? something was happening. The prophets of God... We're told to tell their people something is coming. So we were telling people something is coming, but we didn't know it was the pandemic that had come our way. But I ask you a question. What if you had known? What if you had known that the pandemic was on the way, let's say, in May of last year? You know how it came in November-ish of last year? Mm -hmm. Let's say in May of last year, you got... When that in November of last year that a pandemic was coming, what would you have done? Right. Oh, yeah. You would exactly. You would have prepared for your what season that was coming. And even though your season was going to be tough and rough, you would have prepared better with it, wouldn't you? Because you knew that certain elements, certain tools would have helped you through mm -hmm. that crisis. That is where we are today. But I think um, the, um, I agree with you, but I think also uh, a sidebar to that is that oftentimes, even when the warnings come, um, when prophecy comes, when a word of knowledge comes, spiritual discernment, if we're honest, we don't always um, obey, or we still don't always prepare properly. Right. But it, I mean, it's just like, like okay, this is like a real simple example. It's like if you have an exam you have to take. Uh -huh. And you know that exam is what's today's date? October seventh. Brother Sansa's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> that if you knew and whoever else's birthday or celebration is today, October seventh. Congratulations. And a shout out to my big bro, Mr. Oh, Melvin. Oh Pia. yeah, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. To my brother's birthday. That's October right. 8th. And so thank you. So um so let's say I have an exam scheduled for October twelfth. Yes. But I knew about it six months ago. And I didn't really do a whole lot to prepare for it. Right. So then on October 11th, I'm, I'm, I'm cramming. So even though sometimes we know mm -hmm. in advance, mm -hmm. 
what we need to do for a certain season. We don't always properly prepare. No, we don't. We don't. Mm -hmm. But the key is, if you knew, you know how people say, if you if I knew better, I would do better. I would do better. That's not always true, too. Right. But for the connection or the for the context of which I'm using it here, we're presupposing that if you knew better, you would do better. Right. And if you knew ahead of time that the pandemic was coming, you would have made your stockpiles a little sooner. Right. Correct? And so, like it is with that, we must understand that seasons are coming our way. As I said last week, mm-hmm. you're either coming from a season, you're either currently in a season, or you're headed to a season. Right. What we were dealing with last week and this week is your season that you're headed to. Right. Some of the illustrations I want to use is by helping you understand this. This week's subtitle is divine or understanding. If you're taking notes, understanding divine connection. Understanding divine connection. Amen? Understanding divine connection. For that, I want to use the illustration of your 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 your, your most um, utilized prophet, or one of the most utilized prophets in the Bible, Mister David himself. Amen. My one of my favorite Bible characters is David. What I want to capitalize off of is this. Pastor Shelley ended last week by describing to us that there was an anointing, but not necessarily. An appointing. See, God can anoint you for a time, but not sit you in place for that time. Woo! Mm. Yes, 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 he can. Yes, he it is so. It is so. Yes. He can sit, set you up to be anointed for something, empower you for something, yeah. that he hasn't p- placed you in the position of that anointing that he gave you. And so that was the case with David. He was anointed from the field, came out from the back, from Jesse's house, right? Sat down and had the service, you can call it that, with Nathan, right? When he pointed him out as future king Mm -hmm. of Israel. Now remember, when he pointed him out as the next king of Israel, there was currently a king in place. Mm -hmm. Samuel, you mean Samuel. I'm sorry, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you for that. No problem. Samuel. uh, Nathan was another prophet for David later on down the road. I'm skipping my prophets. I love them all. And so Samuel. So Samuel was having a a, a gathering, remember? And David was at the celebration of that gathering. He even found out what he was having that gathering for. He found out that he was the hand-picked one of God Mm -hmm. to become the king, the next king of Israel. But check this out. There was currently a guy in office already. Yeah. Woo, this is election time, too. There was currently Saul. a guy in office. His name was Saul. Yeah. He had a son, and his son's name was Jonathan. Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, yeah. Saul was king. So who was Jonathan? You got it. He was the prince. And who was David? David was Jesse's son. David was shepherd Jesse's boy. son, which is a shepherd boy. David was back in the field doing things like tending to sheep, having episodes where he was uh, confronting lions and dealing with bears. Oh, my. Right. Preparation. Exactly. Preparation. Right. And so Pastor Shelley went over that last week. What I would like to capitalize off of this week is to show you a divine connection. Amen. Here's the divine connection. While he was pointed out at Jesse's house Mm -hmm. with Samuel, he was being prepared. After that acknowledgement from Samuel and God, then David came in the camp with Saul, the current king. Then Goliath talked some trash to him. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he shall insult my God? And that young man, David, came with his slingshot and he slung it back and he hit that giant Mm -hmm. in the head, chopped off his head and brought the head to Saul. Huh? Now, when he did that, understand this. He was the anointed one. Yeah. Huh? He was the anointed one, but guess what? He still wasn't appointed to the position. 
Mm. Not at that time. Mm. Mm. Not at that time. But Lord have mercy. Let me show you this concept. But he was being prepared. Yes. See, when he slung what he had in his satchel at that giant, Mm -hmm. he slung something that he was anointed to swing. Right. He swung something that only he could do. Where everybody else was trying to fight Goliath with swords and all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff, they were unsuccessful. How is it that he takes what's in his bag, which is a smooth stone, put it back in a slingshot, or however he did it, like this, I think is how he did it, (laughs) swing that, and at that precise time, it hit Goliath in the precision place in his head that will cause that... What, 20 feet giant? I'm just joking. But he was really tall. Had that giant to fall when nothing anybody else was doing could work. Right. What, is I, what am I talking about? I'm talking about divine timing. Yeah. I'm talking about divine destiny. I'm talking about a divine situation where he came into it and he yeah. fought that giant. Yeah. And he was recognized for doing what? Using his talent. And I was just telling that special someone. The Bible says your gift will make room for you Hallelujah. and put you in the presence of what? Great, Great men. So what was David's gift? Oh, my goodness. He had several of them. But the one I'm referring to right now in order to face a giant, which is what you need to face your next giant, is courage. Hallelujah. You need courage. And that was one of David's strength. And he had boldness. the strength of courage, boldness, and fearlessness. Amen. And that's what you're going to need in this next season of your life. Fearlessness, boldness, and courageousness. Amen. And now, now check this out. Now, this is what I want to point out to you. Amen. Because he was anointed, but he wasn't appointed yet. So let me tell you how his appointment was set up. So after he brings in chapter number, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and don't go there, I'm just walking you, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the debate, or excuse me, the fight with Goliath happens, right, after the fight with Goliath happens, then in verse 18, it picks up from there, chapter 18,18. now, let me give you the, 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 the concept of chapter 18 starting off, David has now killed Goliath, He's carrying his head, this is some powerful stuff, Mm. to Saul, saying, hey, look, I'll take my prize now. (laughs) I got this guy, but I ain't really doing it for no prize. I was doing it because he insulted my God. Mm. Amen. He insulted my God, and I was willing to go to war or lose my life for my God. How many of you all are willing to do that for your God? Amen. And it's amazing you say that because... um, David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah, come on now, Pastor. Yes. He was. He yes. was. So, a little bit more uh, on that. So, check this out. So, here's where I'm going with that. Because we had a little dialogue in the beginning. I just want to make sure that they get what, what they came to get. What I want you to know is that he came to Saul. They had a conversation. Saul said, as, 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 he was, uh, as David ran out there to fight Goliath, now, you got to understand how this backdrop looks here. All of Saul's people are warriors. Right. They're around him, and Goliath keeps taunting them every day, same time of day, talking trash about their God and about their weak army. Then Saul, the king, sees this little boy right. run out in the middle of it, run to do it. Courageousness, remember? Yeah. He ran to do it. Yeah. He didn't just stroll or fearfully walk up to. He ran towards Goliath. When Saul said saw that, he looked at Abner. He said, who, who, who is that? They, I, I don't know who it is. God, I mean, it's David, but I don't know where. Where does he come from? I don't know. I, don't, I swear, I don't know. All right, we'll find out. So when David finishes with Goliath, and he brings that head to him, verse um, chapter number 17, and he brings that head to him. He has dialogue with Saul. And Saul asks David, who is your father? Because he's young. You got to remember. Yeah. He, he needs him in his army. I mean, think about it, guys. If you are the number one person in charge and one guy goes and destroys your enemy, but he's uh, below the age group that you can have them, you're going to want to know where his parents are, right? right? So yeah. you can do what? 
Let him join your army. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he asked David, who is your parents? He said, I'm the son of Jesse, your servant. Oh, from then in, from that moment on, the Bible says he didn't return back home to Jesse's house. Mm -hmm. He went with Saul. So now we pick it up in chapter number 18. And chapter number 18, verse number one, it says, And it came to pass, when he made an end of speaking unto Saul, speaking of David, the soul of Jonathan yeah. was knit to the soul of David. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan loved him as his own. My goodness. Verse number two. Let me see here. I'm going to jump back to the easy reading version, okay? Easy yeah. reading version. Now, verse number three, rather. Jonathan loved David as much as himself, so they made a special agreement. Mm -hmm. Jonathan took off his coat, and he was wearing, or coat that he was wearing, and gave it to David. Right. In fact, Jonathan his gave armor. David his whole uniform, his armor, yeah. including his sword. Yeah. <laughs> his man. Jonathan gave David his uniform. That is his position with the army of the Israelites. Think about who Jonathan was. Right. He wasn't just anybody in the in the army. He was Saul's what? Son. Son. Mm -hmm. So that means he was already stacked up just because. Because you know how we do, right, Chum Chum? Excuse me, that slipped out. But you know how we do. Catch that later. But we have rank due to who our father is. You follow what I'm saying? And so Jonathan was up in rank. Now watch this. He takes off his uniform and gives it to David. Not only that, then he takes his object to defend himself, and he gives it to David, which is his sword. Then he takes his, um, it says also he took even his belt, mm -hmm. right? His belt, his uniform, and his sword, including his bow. He okay. Basically, he took his, his, his elements of war, yeah, everything he had. Mm -hmm. and he gave it to, Jack, uh, to David. What I'd like to point out to you is something that I've never heard before, Pastor, and it came in my spirit, and I thought I would share it with them. Amen. And, um, and, it is, and it is this. I believe that Jonathan and David recognized the connection that was being made. Mm -hmm. I think Jonathan recognized it first in David. Yeah. Now imagine if you are the son of the king, and you're watching this young man that's your age, you didn't go out there and do that. Right. He went out there and fought, and not only did he fight, he won. Mm -hmm. He comes back to the camp. He's talking to Jonathan's father. Jonathan's looking at him. Think about this. Jonathan's looking at David, talk to his dad, Saul, and he's now won a wife and some other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he has a prize, and Jonathan's looking at him, and this is what I discovered, Pastor. Tell us. We actually need to recognize the connections that need to be made. Right. In our lives. Covenant. Covenant, Covenant relationships. Covenant relationships that yeah. need to be made. Here's what I mean. Sometimes you, my friend and family, you have something about you, something that's going on with you that's not so strong. It's kind of weak. But then you have a connection with someone or you're seeing someone afar off who's actually well connected in strength with with that weakness that you have. Right. It's almost like same paper. Yes. You go, you, I got a same paper person in my life. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Building me up spiritually. It's like same paper. You take it and, you know, to smooth out uh -huh, the uh -huh. rough edges on, to make yeah. it smooth. Yes. And so it, it, it appears it looks like Saul was the same paper to David. Yes. Like the, you know. The friction. From, yeah. And to prepare yeah. him and. The crucifixion, not literally being crucified, yes, but yes. to prepare him because mm -hmm. he was going to be a king. And why not sit up under the king for some training? Yes, that's <laughs> my point. That's, that's exactly my point. When, so, when Jonathan was looking at David, mm -hmm. he saw David possess a strength right. that Jonathan didn't, didn't have. have. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Amen. Now, check this out. So, in verse number... Um, Five, it said, David went to fight, so, uh, so, um, let me see, I'm sorry. David went to fight wherever Saul sent him. He was very successful, 
And Saul put him in charge of soldiers that pleased everyone in Saul's officers, right? Now, in the King James Version, it explains in a different way. Mm -hmm. What I want to extrapolate from this is this, that David, remember, mm -hmm. had a prophecy over his life, right. which is that he would one day be what? King. And then the king's son befriends David. Takes off his clothes. What did that That's mean? Wrong, wrong. What did that mean when Jonathan took off what he had and gave it to David? Let me tell you what the metaphor is. Tell Let us. me tell you what the symbolism is. Tell us. I recognize who you are. Oh, yeah. I recognize who you are yeah, and good. I bow down to the deity, which is God, Hallelujah. in you. Yes. And I recognize that I need you in my life right. to help me get to the next level. See, I believe that Jonathan looked at David and needed courage. Right, yeah. I think he looked at David and said, I need to be brave like that. I think he looked at David's heart. And I thought, I, I, I see a, a, a strong humbleness on this young man. Yeah. David was very, very humble. Yeah. Yet he looked apart. Jonathan was the part, but was the son, which lacks humility in yeah. that way. It's hard to have humility when you are like that. You know what I mean? When you were born with the silver spoon yeah. in your mouth, literally, you are born with that arrogance. I'm not saying Jonathan necessarily was arrogant. I'm saying just think of how a son of a king would act. Yeah. Think of how sons of preachers act, or so sons of judges or politicians or people that are famous, how they act. Mm -hmm. So it is presupposed that Jonathan had a couple of little issues like that. And not all of them act like that. Not all. Right. That's the, the disclaimer. Not all. But I'm only speaking in the context right. of this <laughs> particular situation. Yes, sir. <laughs> you funny. And so here's what I'm trying to say. Now, what did David look upon Jonathan and see? Now, this is where you need to get it. A divine connection. You need to understand divine connections. Those connections that you need to get you where you need to be. Now check this out. Jonathan saw that on David. What did David see on Jonathan? Woo! He saw a, a connected individual to his position. He saw a connected individual to his position. You need to be looking at people in, at people that are in your life in your lives, excuse me, and you see them have strengths, and you see things about them that you want, and you feel that God is connecting you to them. It's not just you admire this about a person, and you go connect yourself to them. It's an orchestrated yeah, God, connection, yeah. Amen. an orchestrated Amen. connection, and you feel it, and they feel it. Especially when you see that they have something that you need. And I don't mean a pragmatic thing. Right. Like a house or a car. Right. I mean an element of character. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, a position with God. Yeah. I mean a relationship with God that you would like to have. Yeah. Not coveting the relationship that they have. Right. But just looking at the principles that got them yes. there yes. to get it. You yes. look at a marriage and you say, that marriage is beautiful. I want that. No, 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 no. Want the relationship that that marriage has with God. Hallelujah. Huh? You want that. Don't yes. want what they have. Want what God wants you to have yes. by having that connection with your spouse with God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Now, I believe that David, when he saw Jonathan, he saw a position of strength. He saw the fact that the one who deserved the position, woo, mm. golly, one who, who reserved, or should I say, one who was deserving of the position due to dynasty. Right. How dynasty is back at that day and of there kings. No jealousy, yeah, there wasn't no jealousy. Dynasty at that time was king this, had a son, that son became king. Right. Over and over and over. And that's called a dynasty. Right. So the Saul dynasty would have been Jonathan. Right. But here we have Jonathan taking off his position and handing it to David. So what did David see? David saw somebody that had his position. Had his position of favor. Mm. David understood right off the bat that I am to be king one day. But I see Jonathan. Jonathan knows how to be in a palace. Right. Jonathan yeah. knows how to talk. Jonathan knows how to speak. I literally looked apart, but I've been out there with sheep. 
I've been out there with ox and 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 uh, taming things and pushing things and 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 and, and, and um, shepherding things and fighting and fighting bears and lions and stuff like that. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. But here he is. How do I become king? Right. How do I take this position that yeah. God has given me? Yeah. Yeah. I do that best by the connections right. that he gave me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And here Jonathan is. Full of the palatial atmosphere of the palace. He knows what it's like to have servants. He knows what it's like. Excuse me. He knows the, the legalistic terminology. He knows the, the physical look. He knows the guards, the dress. He knows the eating habits. He knows the schedules. He knows all of that. And here he is smitten by David. The Bible says his soul was knit to David. Mm -hmm. Woo. Perfect, perfect. They had a divine connection. Yes. David embraced it. Jonathan embraced it. So what did they learn from each other? David, I believe, learned how to be king. Yeah. Jonathan, I believe, had that bravery again. Yeah. Because in the end, he recognized his war was over. He fell upon his own sword. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was in that situation, but that took a brave act. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. And let me just tell you this. Tell you this, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding your season. Understanding and, be, and preparing for your season. I just want to tell you that on our next go-round, coming up, I want you to tune in again. Where I hopefully we will be finishing up this particular uh, position that we are on right now. And that was, we just finished with divine connections yes. right mm -hmm. and 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 what's my time looking like <laughs> you don't have me doing this though like this right doing that y'all y'all need to type in and say something about type in and say you got more time pastor <laughs> that's all that was just a setup minutes. for that that was just a setup for that minutes. okay so we're going to continue next time sunday. okay mm -hmm. next sunday this sunday coming on the divine connection and then I would like to capitalize a little bit off of warning you against yeah. demonic distraction. Amen. So first you make the connection, but sometimes it can be a demonic distraction Ooh. for you that came into your life, a person, huh? a situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, what does your spirit say? Matter of fact, Pastor, somebody out there right now listening to me, you're not sure of a person, of a group, of an entity that has come into your life, you feel like it's the right thing, but you're not sure. And you say, Pastor Kobe, I'm not sure exactly what this is like. I'm not sure what this connection is like. I like this person. This person likes me. It seems like they're good for me. I'm not sure. Let me explain to you. The divine connection will usually have within it, inherent, sold into, attached, firmly committed to the betterment of your life. Hallelujah. They will usually have some things that you have on the altar with God that only you and God know about and you see it in them. They don't know that it's in them or they don't know or they're not demonstrating it rather so that you can like them for God. They don't have a clue at that moment. They're being that person. They are acting that way. They are praying that way. This is their character. This is who they are, their integrity. When no one is looking, this is who they are. Yeah, that happens mean? to be where God is working with you to be. You get it? That is one divine connection. But usually a demonic distraction comes along and it has you revisiting your past. Mm. The past things that you've been grafted from. It has you revisiting things like that. They are making mention of your past. Even if they don't know what your past is, it's pulling you back to a place. You follow me? It's pulling you back to a place. You like them. They come with good feelings and everything. But the end result of where they're pulling you to is your, your, your spirit is telling you that it's going to end up being back where you left. Yeah. And you're not trying to go there because remember, Amen. we're talking Hallelujah. about where you're headed. Not where you've been. Hallelujah. Amen. Where you're headed and not where you've been. Hallelujah. And so tune in next week where we'll be talking about Joseph. Yeah. Understanding the divine connection yeah. and going over a couple of distractions. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you for your time. Amen. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Amen. I'll turn it over so to you. Absolutely. I'm going to let you keep it. Oh, it's, you're going to keep it's it. In, it's in your hand. I, I'm hot. It's in your hand. I'm hot. I'm hot. Okay. God is good. <laughs>
Well, if you've been listening to us and, and looking upon us and studying with us and having some fun with us, I hope. I pray right now that in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. that you are inspired. I pray that you understand something about divine connection. But there's some of you all who can't take advantage of this divine connection because you're not connected to the Savior. And in order to have that divine connection, remember, I didn't just say connection, Pastor. I said divine connection. Mm -hmm. See, we make connections. The devil makes connections. Yeah. You feel me? But I'm talking about a divine connection. Yes. That denotes that God is involved in Hallelujah. it. And in order for God to be involved in it, you must accept his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. As your Lord and Savior. So if you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior into your life, please repeat after me in this prayer Thank so you, that Lord. you can get to your divine connection. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you a broken spirit. I come to you a broken man or woman asking you to gain control over my life. Save me, oh God. Fill me full of your spirit. Hallelujah. Connect me with the right people and get the other people out of my life. Hallelujah. Show them to me, Lord, and help me make the decision to remove them from my life. Help me, Lord, to bring in the connections of the new people that you have in my life. Thank you, I thank you for the connections. I thank you for your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus Amen. Christ, man. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Thank you so much. Pastor, Pastor, thank you You're for welcome. the word. God thank you good. for the message. Yes, yes. Number time, good. he's nah, he's excellent. Awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome God. He's an awesome God. Yeah, he yes. is. <laughs> he don't own the rights to that music. I don't need to go out. <laughs> but he is awesome. <laughs> Just want to um, say to you all, thank you for being with us this evening. We love you, but more importantly, God loves you. Thank you so much. God bless and have a wonderful week.